Control Unit and Micro Programmed Control. Learning Objectives At the end of this topic you will be able to Predict the possibilities of developing a control unit in two different ways. Understand and describe a hardwired control unit. Understand and describe a micro-programmed control unit which involves micro-instructions and micro-programs. Outcomes By the end of this topic, you will be able to Analyze the functionality of control unit Design control unit Hardwired control Micro-programmed control for various applications We know what machine instruction instruction set and instruction cycle are and what the relationship between them is as discussed in unit 2. We also know that all the activities inside the machine are directed by the control unit which is a part of the CPU or the processor. Here is a list of move instructions for Intel 8085 microprocessor. This instruction copies the contents of the source register into the destination register. The contents of the source register are not altered. If one of the operands is a memory location, its location is specified by the contents of the HL registers. For example, move B, C or move B, M. It is an assembly language which is in human understandable form. Move B, C means Copy source register C's content to destination register B. We can express this action in another language called Register Transfer Language, RTL. The RTL equivalent instruction to this instruction is B, reverse arrow, C. Say if this happens at T0 cycle, then it is written as T0 at B reverse arrow C. Micro operations are those operations that are performed on the data stored in registers. The control unit initiates a micro operation by sending control signals to the intended components. After the register to register movements happen, we say the micro operation is executed. To summarize, we can say that the execution of a program consists of the sequential execution of instructions. Each instruction is executed during an instruction cycle made up of shorter sub-cycles. Example, fetch, which involves a few micro-operations. Indirect address calculation, which again involves a few micro-operations. And similarly, operand, fetch, execute, interrupt. So, like we have categories in machine instructions, we have categories in micro operations too. Like there are data transfer micro operations, arithmetic micro operations, logical micro operations, and shift micro operations. All these micro operations may involve a transfer between registers or a transfer between a register and an external bus or an arithmetic operation or a logical operation. A few examples of arithmetic micro-operations are few shift micro-operations are few logical micro-operations are Let us see now what those micro-operations which are involved in instruction cycle are. Assume that an instruction resides at a 16-bit address 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, which is in binary and whose hex equivalent is 0, 0, 0064. This address resides in the PC. This address is moved into MAR, which points to a location in memory. The memory word at the said address is then transferred into MBR. This is an instruction, which then is moved into IR. The fetch phase is done. Let us see the micro operations involved in the instruction cycle. Going to the first phase, the fetch phase. In the first time unit, 
Move contents of PC to MAR. Second time unit. Move contents of memory location specified by MAR to MBR. Increment by 1 the contents of the PC. Third time unit. Move contents of MBR to IR. Indirect cycle. The address field of the instruction is transferred to the MAR. This is then used to fetch the address of the operand. Finally, the address field of the IR is updated from the MBR so that it now contains a direct rather than an indirect address. In interrupt cycle in the first cycle, the contents of the PC are transferred to the MBR so that they can be saved for return from the interrupt. Then the MAR is loaded with the address at which the contents of the PC are to be saved. And the PC is loaded with the address of the start of the interrupt processing routine. These two actions may each be a single micro operation. The final step is to store the MBR, which contains the old value of the PC, into memory. The processor is now ready to begin the next instruction cycle, the execute cycle. This cycle actually causes the last fetched macro instruction happen. A binary adder realizes the binary numbers addition. A 4-bit full adder is shown here. Now let us take an instruction add R1, R2 which adds the contents of R2 with R1 and stores the result in R1. The micro operation requires one cycle because it is a pure register reference instruction. Consider another add instruction add R1 X where X is a memory location's address. This instruction requires three cycles. In the first cycle, the content of the address part of the instruction register is transferred or copied into MAR, which points to a memory location. In the second cycle, the memory content of the location pointed by MAR is transferred to MBR, which is a processor register. In the third cycle, the content of MBR is added to the content of R1 and the result is stored in R1. We can define the functional requirements for the control unit, those functions that the control unit must perform. So, what are those functions that a control unit must perform in order to cause micro operations? A definition of these functional requirements is the basis for the design and implementation of the control unit. After a review of what we've seen so far, we can say that all micro operations fall into one of the following categories. Transfer data from one register to another. Transfer data from a register to an external interface, example system bus. Transfer data from an external interface to a register. Perform an arithmetic or logic operation using registers for input and output. The control unit performs two basic tasks, sequencing. The control unit causes the processor to step through a series of micro operations in the proper sequence, based on the program being executed. Execution. The control unit causes each micro operation to be performed. Since the micro operations do not happen at one time, timing the micro operations is a feature that makes the task of modeling a control unit easier. A general model of a control unit showing all of its inputs and outputs. The inputs are clock. This is how the control unit keeps time. The control unit causes one micro operation or a set of simultaneous micro operations to be performed for each clock pulse. This is sometimes referred to as the processor cycle time or the clock cycle time. Instruction register. The opcode and addressing mode of the current instructions are used to determine which micro operations to perform during the execute cycle. Flags. These are needed by the control unit to determine the status of the processor and the outcome of previous ALU operations. For example, for the increment and skip F0, ISZ instruction, the control unit will increment the PC if the zero flag is set. Control signals from control bus. The control bus portion of the system bus 
provide signals to the control unit. The outputs are as follows. Control signals within the processor. These are of two types. Those that cause data to be moved from one register to another. And those that activate specific ALU functions. Control signals to control bus. These are also of two types. Control signals to memory and control signals to the I.O. modules. This example shows a simple processor with a single accumulator, AC. The data paths between elements are indicated. The control paths for signals emanating from the control unit are not shown, but the terminations of control signals are labeled as C with a numbered subscript and indicated by a circle. The control unit receives input from the clock, the instruction register and flags. With each clock cycle, the control unit reads all of its inputs and emits a set of control signals. Control signals go to three separate destinations, data paths. The control unit controls the internal flow of data. For each path to be controlled, there is a switch indicated by a circle in the figure. For example, the various control signals that are generated from fetch to decode is illustrated. The control signal C2 moves the content of PC to MAR. With CR to memory, and C5, the memory content is transferred to MBR. With C4, the content of MBR is moved to IR. And with C13, the content of IR is moved to control unit for decoding. A control signal from the control unit temporarily opens the gate to let data pass. ALU. The control unit controls the operation of the ALU by a set of control signals. These signals activate various logic circuits and gates within the ALU. System bus. The control unit sends control signals out onto the control lines of the system bus. Example, memory read. Control signals for other operations are shown in the table. In a hardwired implementation, the control unit is essentially a state machine circuit. Its input logic signals are transformed into a set of output logic signals, which are the control signals. First, consider the instruction register. The control unit makes use of the opcode and will perform different actions. Issue a different combination of control signals for different instructions. To simplify the control logic unit, there should be a unique logic input for each opcode. This function can be performed by a decoder, which takes an encoded input and produces a single output. In general, a decoder will have n binary inputs and 2 to the power of n binary outputs. Each of the 2 to the power of n different input patterns will activate a single unique output. Say, the decoder is 3 cross 8 decoder. It takes 0, 1, 0 as input and 0, 2 is the output that goes into the control logic that generates a combination of control signals. The decoder for a control unit will typically have to be more complex than that to account for variable length opcodes. An example of the digital logic used to implement a decoder is shown. Control unit logic. To define the hardwired implementation of a control unit, all that remains is to discuss the internal logic of the control unit that produces output control signals as a function of its input signals. Essentially what must be done for each control signal to derive a Boolean expression of that signal as a function of the inputs. Let us define two new control signals P and Q that have the following interpretation. PQ is equal to 0, 0, FET cycle. PQ is equal to 0, 1, indirect cycle. PQ is equal to 1, 0, execute cycle. PQ is equal to 1, 1, interrupt cycle. Then the following Boolean expression defines. In a modern complex processor, 
the number of Boolean equations needed to define the control unit is very large. The task of implementing a combinatorial circuit that satisfies all of these equations becomes extremely difficult. The result is that a far simpler approach known as microprogramming is used. The term microprogram was first coined by M. V. Wilkes in the early 1950s. In addition to the use of control signals, each microoperation is described in symbolic notation. The two basic tasks performed by a microprogrammed control unit are as follows. Microinstruction sequencing get the next micro instruction from the control memory micro instruction execution generate the control signals needed to execute the micro instruction in executing a micro program the address of the next micro instruction to be executed is in one of these categories determined by instruction register next sequential address branch the first category occurs only once per instruction cycle, just after an instruction is fetched. The second category is the most common in most designs. However, the design cannot be optimized just for sequential access. Branches, both conditional and unconditional, are a necessary part of a microprogram. Based on the current microinstruction condition flags and the contents of the instruction register, a control memory address must be generated for the next microinstruction. Address information in the microinstruction can be two address fields, single address field, variable format. Consider that there are a total of k different internal and external control signals to be driven by the control unit. In Wilkie's scheme, k bits of the microinstruction would be dedicated to this purpose. This allows all of the two power k possible combinations of control signals to be generated during any instruction cycle. But we can do better than this if you observe that not all of the possible combinations will be used. Summary Let's summarize the topic. Microoperation is an elementary operation performed on the information stored in one or more registers. Binary adder is constructed with full adder circuits connected in cascade. The control unit performs two basic tasks. Sequencing the control unit causes the processor to step through a series of micro-operations in the proper sequence based on the program being executed. Execution The control unit causes each micro-operation to be performed. Hardwired control unit is a state machine circuit whose input logic signals are transformed into a set of output logic signals which are the control signals. The two basic tasks performed by a micro-programmed control unit are Micro-instruction sequencing Get the next micro instruction from the control memory. Micro instruction execution. Generate the control signals needed to execute the micro instruction.